Hey everybody, so Evergreen State College is now telling their SJW protesters that they might be conducting illegal activities. This is after, of course, the hearing in which Brett Weinstein went before the, uh, the board of directors and explained to them that the students legally kidnapped somebody. And I think now, after using words like that, they started taking it a little bit more seriously. So we'll go ahead and take a look. And this is on The Blaze, which I do believe is Glenn Beck's website, if I'm not mistaken. A Friday memo emailed from Washington's Evergreen State College administrators to the student body have said that actions taken by the social justice advocates over the last few months, including intimidation and prohibition of egress from school areas, have been illegal and could result in criminal charges. According to the College Fix, Vice President for Student Affairs Wendy Andrus wrote in a July 14th memo that recent events by social justice warrior students have tarnished Evergreen State College's reputation to the point that enrollment at the college has fallen. And I'll leave a link to that, all of these in the description as well. Furthermore, Andrus noted that the Washington legislators that introduced two bills to phase out public funding for Evergreen turned the college into a private entity. <laughs> According to the college fix, in early June, State Representative Matt Manweller introduced House Bill 2221, and State Senator Phil Forciato introduced sister legislation, Senate Bill 5946. These bills would remove funding from Evergreen and give it to the UW Engineering Program, STEM programs, math, and science, according to Kiro interview with Manweller on June 8th. Let's spend the money on a credible degree rather than a social justice victimization, what was me? I want reparation pseudoscience that they are teaching at Evergreen. Couldn't have said it better. When this bill passes, they still find they still feed each other all the Marxist nonsense they want. They just won't be able to do it with money from my constituents unless my constituents can ch uh, choose to donate it, which I doubt. I really like I, I like these two guys. In Endress's memo, she listed two incidents in particular as their greatest concern. On May twenty third, a sizable group approached the classroom where faculty member. Brett White, okay, we're familiar with all of that. I'm not even going to bother, because if you <laughs> if you haven't seen all of that by now, I'd be surprised. Andrus's memo went on to warn students that intimidation and obstructing people from leaving is criminal and may result in charges, college, college Fix reported. In the future, individuals could be charged with crimes including obstructing law enforcement, disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, and or unlawful imprisonment, Andrus wrote. Preventing a law enforcement officer from responding could place community members at a great risk. Blocking Egress doors is a violation of fire codes. This action endangered everyone in the library. I have to be honest, this is the first time I've seen this word is in this article. According to the college fix, Andrus did not mention the incidents involving the baseball bat wielding group that assaulted a dissenting student. Oh, they actually did assault somebody. That's lovely. Nor the intimidation of college president George Bridges, who was given a list of demands as a large crowd of students shouted at and insulted him. Much of it reminded me of the shaming rituals from from South Korea. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, they basically will, when somebody in the media like messes up, they'll do a like a walk of shame where everyone like like pretty much. It's hard to describe, but the videos are out there. Feel free to check it out if you're interested. Much of Evergreen's troubles began in May when Weinstein refused to leave campus during a day of absence, in which Black and Latino students typically leave the campus. That year, black and Latino students wanted to reverse the order, forcing white students to leave. That's right. Instead of making it voluntary, it became a, no, instead of us voluntarily wanting to go, we force you to go because of your race, because of the color of your skin rather than the content of your character. Gotta love that. That year, black and Latino students wanted to reverse the order, forcing white students to leave. This resulted in the May 23rd incident where a group of student activist confronted Weinstein then screamed and insulted the professor. Last Wednesday, students and faculty testified in front of Evergreen's Board of Trustees about the deteriorating situation at the college. Among those who testified were Weinstein, who told the board that people were, by the legal definition, I believe, kidnapped and imprisoned. That included faculty members and administrators. Others were hunted on campus, which apparently did happen. They stalked his students, they stalked him, and from what I remember, the police even told him he wasn't safe, that they were planning on hurting him, and he had to leave. So it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, the reason I just decided to read it through real quick instead of doing like a video where I edit the meat and bones is most of it's pretty relevant, first of all. And second of all, 
there isn't much to edit. Uh, but anyway, I see this as a victory. Finally, <laughs> all it took was somebody going to the board of trustees and saying, look, they legally kidnapped people. It's time we put a stop to this. And I think once they realized that, A, their funding was gone, and, or at least public funding from taxpayers was gone, two, their enrollment has plummeted and no one wants to go to this damn school, and three, well, I, I, I lost my train of thought, but I, I mainly just wanted to share this victory with you because it took these board of trustees being told that they might be liable for legal crimes. That was That was number three. It, it, that's what it took to get them to take responsibility and tell these students, you know, maybe you ought to stop, I don't know, screaming black power. That <laughs> might be a good start. But uh, let me know what you guys think about this story in the comment section. I'll leave a link to all of the things that I clicked on in the in the description below because there's like quite a few links. Or we can just go ahead and take a look at it real quick. Let's see. Evergreen State President, slight decline in enrollment after this year's insanity. Slight decline. Let's look for the percentage. Huh? Remember when I said there wasn't else, much else to look at? Well, I guess I lied because there's other stuff. Um, so 12, 1,200 students were admitted and haven't enrolled in classes yet. So that's that's a pretty significant number. Other than that, I don't really see anything there. I remember talking about that earlier. What's this? Evergreen student claims she was silenced for being white. This just happened the other day. Okay, an Evergreen student college, an Evergreen State College student claims that classmates refused to let her voice her opinions in a meeting with administrators earlier this year because she's white. She says that she was rebuffed several times when she tried to express her views on the pro on the protests that shook campus this spring, even being told to stand silently in the back after classmates reluctantly let her join one meeting. Immediately, when I got off the elevator, I was told I couldn't go into the room because I was white. Nah, I'm good. I I'm good off these, these fucking crazy people. Um, but I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link to all of this in the description below. Feel free to check it out for yourself. I am more or less done with the, uh, the evergreen controversy. I'm just happy that they finally uh, publicly defunded the school. I didn't know all that had gone through, but it seems like it may have. And their enrollment dropped, so... The important thing happened. People are voting with their wallets, and people are being heard. And not just the people who are screaming that they're not allowed to be heard while chanting things like black power. And then followed by these racist teachers have to go. The irony, the irony is totally lost on those students, by the way. But yeah, again, I apologize for the laziness of this video, but uh, I was kind of eager to get it to you as opposed to editing it editing it down meticulously and then waiting for it to encode kind of wanted to get this to you as soon as i could because the story's kind of big kind of big indeed evergreen state college administrators finally tell sjw's their actions were illegal mm. finally one of the parents decided to do something and by parents i don't mean the actual parents of the students i mean the th theoretical adults in the situation. But yeah, I'll, I'll end this video there. See you guys later.